What? There's no Blender 3.1 animation tutorials on YouTube? Well, that's depressing. The internet's gonna need some spice. Hey guys, it's Elle and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make a Blender animation using Blender 3.0, but this should also work for any of the most recent Blender versions under the version 3 family. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do is head to Roblox Studio to your base plate. We are going to select the load character plugin and type in whatever username you want to use. Make sure there's an X where it says spawn at origin, spawn R6. I don't know why the avatar goes in the ground now, but you can just left click and drag it out. So select it and under explore, right click your username, export selection and save it where you're going to remember. Now get a model that you want to use for your GFX or even some props, whatever you want to use. So this is the model I'm going to be using. I will link it in the description if you want to use it as well. And we're just gonna do the same thing. Go to explore, right click, export selection and call it garden or whatever you want. And once that's saved, we're gonna go open our rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the woman rig and select default. So once we're in Blender, again, to move, hit shift and the swiggly line and use your WASD keys to move. We're going to delete the entire head. So left click and drag a box around it and hit delete or X and then delete. Now that we're left with just the torso and limbs, select your torso, go up to this icon and hit shader editor. Now you will see these nodes. You're going to use your scroll on your mouse to scroll in and find texture. Then select the small file icon to open image and you're going to find where you save your avatar. I would highly recommend putting it on this icon option so you can see clearly what you're selecting and it should look like your body is laid out. Select it and open image. Now that we have our clothes on, we just need to import our head. So go to file, import, wavefront obj. And this time you're also going to find the body you exported from Roblox Studio. Select the OBJ. Before we import it, go to geometry over here and you're going to select split by group. That way we can move something separately. We don't want the entire body, we just want the head. So go ahead and press import OBJ and let's just move it to the side for now. So here's our whole body, we don't want that. So you can just deselect and we're going to delete the arms and legs and torso. And I know the head looks very weird. I even have bangs and it's not showing up. So if you're wondering why, we are going to fix that. So first you're going to left click and drag box around the head, right click and press join. So the last thing you want to do is go to material properties over here. And under each of these handles, you're gonna scroll down and under viewport display, change the blend mode from alpha blend to alpha clip. And do the exact same thing for the other handles. Select it, scroll down and change it to alpha clip. Okay, so now that our head is fixed, we can select it. And to flip it around, we're gonna give it a little 180. So go to rotation, under Z, change zero to 180. And your move arrows are probably down here at this point. So to fix that, you're going to right click on your head, set origin to geometry, and it is a lot easier. And we're also going to import our model. So file, import wavefront obj and find your model and you're also going to want to make sure it's split by group here you can deselect it you will notice if you try to move it again and you select something everything is ungrouped but what you can do is move your avatar so you're just going to select this rectangle around your torso hold down shift and also select your head and now we can just rotate this instead of rotating the model. You could even make your avatar hold any of these models within this model. So for example, maybe I want to hold this croissant. Select the croissant and you can move it to your avatar. And again, it's a little weird looking. So go to material properties, 
change this to alpha clip. Okay, so here I have my scene set up. We're going to add a camera, then go to the camera toggle icon. Position your camera wherever you want your starting frame to be. It doesn't have to be perfect now, but just have a sense of what you want to see. Then you can go to this pre-render icon to check how it looks. I know it's dark right now, so we're actually going to do the next step, which is going to this world icon, use nodes, and under color, press on this circle icon, environment texture, and if you don't have any HDRIs or have no idea what I'm talking about right now, you're gonna simply Google Polyhaven on Google, press HDRIs, and you'll see a huge selection of skies. And you're going to look for whichever one you think has good lighting. And once you find one you like, you're going to select it, make sure it's 4K over here, then hit download. So now that you have an HDRI, you can hit open and go to your downloads and select your HDRI. Personally, I like to use this one. So hit the fourth sphere icon, which is the pre-render. So it's a little dark. I'm going to go back to this third sphere icon. You don't really want to go to the pre-render unless you just want a quick peek of how your final render will look. Exit the camera and add a light. So hit add light sun. And the light is down here, so we're just going to bring it up. And that did not make a huge difference. So you can actually edit those settings if you hit this light bulb icon. Then you can change the color of your light. And if you can't see it still, you can change the strength. So left click and drag it up. So before we even get animating, we just have a couple more important things you don't want to miss. So first, go to this TV icon. Make sure your render engine is under cycles. If you wanted, you could do EV, and you can see this is what it would look like. EV is a different rendering type, and I would highly recommend this if you want your animation done very quickly. It takes like a couple seconds to render one frame. EV doesn't get all of the shadows and lighting as good as cycles but if you don't mind eevee then that's cool next scroll down a bit and you will see render hit the noise then under light paths change transparent to zero so just slide that down down here if you hover on this thin black line there are arrows you're going to left click and drag up so we have some more working space and we're going to be working down here using this timeline. So basically how this works, if you left click and drag this playhead, you will see that there are numbers in between these intervals of 10. Each one of these are frames. 24 frames is one second of a video. Each frame is like a GFX. You're going to be rendering one rectangular GFX for one frame. So if your laptop or computer takes like an hour to just render one rectangular GFX, then you're going to have a bit of trouble, which is why I would recommend changing cycles to Eevee. But of course, if you can wait many hours for this to render, then good for you. So you're going to press on this circle. And once it's blue, that means you are ready to animate and whatever movement you make, is going to affect your animation so be careful if you stop animating then hit that again so i'm gonna first start off by animating my arms we have to place down a keyframe so to do that you're just going to move or rotate your arm just a tiny bit you can even just like move it and then just move it back we just need to trigger a keyframe so it knows that we want to start animating we know that at frame zero, which is the starting, our arm will be down. So now we're going to have to move this playhead. And again, 24 frames is one second. So I'm just going to move my playhead to about 27 maybe. And now I'm just going to rotate it up like so. And as you can see, it put down another keyframe. So if we went back to zero and hit space to play, there we go and hit space again to pause. So what you want to avoid is placing down lots of keyframes. The more keyframes you put down, the less smooth your animation will be. For example, I would not recommend starting at zero and then moving it two frames 
making a tiny movement, going a few more frames, and then again. But if you spread out your keyframes and just make it one movement, two keyframes, then there you go. It's as easy as that. Maybe if you think this is too slow, you can deselect the keyframes by just pressing on this gray area and now they are gray. That means you deselected them. So just select this one keyframe and you can actually reposition it to whatever frame you want. And after it goes up, I want it to go to the side. So I'm just going to go to 35. As you can tell, it's very stiff and I want more movement in my wrist as well. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to zero and hit space. I want my wrist to rotate around here. So you're going to select the spiky circle. So if you're wondering where my keyframes are from my arm, they are still there. You just can't see it because we're working on a different part of the rig. So if you want to see them again, click on the double circles, which is the arm, and there you have your arm keyframes. But now that I'm doing my wrist, I'm going to only select this, and now you're just focusing on this part. Okay, so, so far I like how my arm animation is. Now you're going to do it to the rest of your limbs. You're going to have to do each part of the body one at a time. Take your time with this. Obviously, you don't want to rush it for better results. So again, if you want to start animating, don't forget to set down a keyframe at zero. So to animate props, you'll probably notice how hard it is to get the timing correct with the movement of your arm. So if you want to, I guess, remove some of that hassle, go to your arm and see where your movement starts. So from 30 to 62, just going to keep that in mind, select your croissant. And as you can see from 30, I set a keyframe there. And at 62, I also put one there, but put it in the position of where my arm is. So that way it's in sync. Kind of. Now you can see that it's pretty much perfect or the closest you can get to perfect. The last thing you probably may or may not want to animate is your camera, which is a very important part of an animation for perspective and all that stuff. So you're going to start by selecting the camera, move your camera to whatever starting position you would like. You'll see that you just put down a keyframe. Now you're going to move it up a few frames and I want it to be over here. So if we go play that, you will see your camera moves. Okay, so here is how the final animation looks. Once you're completely satisfied with how your animation looks, first of all, congrats, you did awesome. And remember to press on this blue circle again to stop animating because whatever movements you make now will affect your animation and it will be a mess. So before we render our animation, we have to get rid of these extra frames that we don't need. So move your playhead to your last frame. As you can see, my last movement happens at about 74. You will see over here, there's a start and an end. You're going to change your end to your last frame. In this case, for me, it's 74, so type in that. And now it just gets rid of these unnecessary extra frames that you don't need to render. Now, the very last thing before we have to render is go to this printer icon. So change the file of format from FFmpeg video to AVI JPEG. Then press on this file icon and you're gonna find somewhere in your computer that you want to save your animation to. And there you should have the exact file location of where your animation will be once it's done rendering. If you hit this pre-render icon, you can see our final animation. I would not recommend watching it in cycles. It's a mess. And again, this is where you can go back and change it to Eevee if you want. 
You could render it in Eevee. Your animation will look exactly like this. You can tell it's very different from Cycles, but I want to have this lighting and quality for mine. So I'm just gonna keep it at Cycles. It will take longer to render, keep that in mind. The very last step for real guys, hit render at the top and render animation. Here's where the magic happens. It will take hours. Again, it's like rendering GFXs. Each frame is one GFX, basically. All right, guys, so it is the next day. I let my animation render overnight. I think that's probably the best resort if you don't have patience, like just sleep and wake up to it the next morning. But yeah, we don't have to save anything like GFXs. You can just close the window and go back to that folder where you put your output for your animation and it should be there. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider leaving a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!